Okay, so what we're going to do today is program the ProLine 21 uh, FMS 3000 unit in a CJ3. So the first thing that you're going to see when you power up the aircraft for the first time, uh, turn the avionics on, all that, is you're going to see the status page. Uh, this tells you what, native, what nav database you have, what active database uh, you have, your UTC, your date, and your program. So the first thing you want to do is you want to check to make sure our active database is indeed valid. So uh, today is, I believe, the 18th of August, uh, and so we have an active database. So we, our database right now is for the 17th of August through September 13th. Um, if our database wasn't active, we'd hit the secondary database by clicking L3. That'd bring it down into the scratch pad, and we move it up into L2. Um, but since we do have an active database, we won't worry about that. We check our UTC time is correct, as well as our date, which it is. So since all since, since the status page looks good, uh, we'll move on to position init. So now what we're going to need to do is to um, program the position of the aircraft. So the most accurate way to do it in this aircraft is to grab the FMS position and throw it into the set position box. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to program our flight plan. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go from uh, Pontiac, Michigan, KPTK, to West Palm Beach, uh, Florida. So K, uh, let's see, PBI. Our departure out of Pontiac is the Rosewood 5 departure, uh, with Rosewood as our transition. So we need to hit the departure slash arrival button, and that brings us up to the departures for Pontiac. We will be doing the Rosewood 5, so we need to hit the next page. There's the uh, Rosewood 5 with Rosewood transition. We can also select the uh, runway 27 left for our departure runway. Uh, you could either execute it right now or wait until everything is done. We'll wait until everything is punched in to execute. Now that, the, now that we punched in our departure procedure as well as our transition as well as the departure runway, we'll hit next to continue punching in the flight plan. Uh, our next route is uh, J43, so we'll type J43 into the scratch pad. And since this is a jet airway, we'll put it in the via side, so we'll hit L1. And uh, our ending fix is uh, VXV throw that into the 2 section, so we'll hit R1, and that gets rid of our discontinuity. Our next uh, route is J46, throw that into L2, another discontinuity pops up, we're going to AMG. Our next route is J45, and then Ormond Beach. So now, we don't have to physically type in all the fixes along the jet routes. The FMS unit will do it for us automatically. Um, now that we have an ending fix um, of Ormond Beach, we now need to put in our arrival to Palm Beach. Since Ormond Beach is the first fix on the arrival, the Ormond, we're doing the Fairway 5 Ormond Beach transition, um, we need to hit the Depart Arrive button. We need to hit it one more time to go to the main menu. Uh, we'll go to the Arrive section for Palm Beach, hit the Fairway 5, Ormond Beach Transition, and then Execute. And we'll go back to Flight Plan. And now we can see that our arrival route, Ormond Beach Fairway 5, ending with a vector to final, is in the, is in the box. Um, the, F the FMS unit is smart enough to know that um, you're ending where you want to go is Palm Beach because we told it that's where we're going in our flight plan. But if you want, you can put destination airport into uh, the flight plan. So now, since we don't know what runway we're using down at Palm Beach, we will not put a approach in at this point. So now that our flight plan is completely done, we'll go ahead and hit the, the performance init page and uh, go ahead and start to initialize the aircraft. So let's just say that we're going to be taking out of here with three packs and two pilots. So we'll have five total. And let's say that uh, it's summer. 
So we'll say, you know, we're all bigger people, 180 pounds average. We'll throw that into L2. Um, let's say that our passengers are going on vacation in Palm Beach, so they're gonna have a lot of luggage, so maybe 100 pounds of luggage total. Uh, the aircraft has sensors in the fuel tank, so it senses how much fuel we have on board, and it will automatically put the fuel in the fuel section to sense fuel. In other airplanes, like the King Air we have, it does not have fuel sensors, so we have to manually punch it in. Um, you can manually punch in the fuel for this aircraft um, if you want, but it's easier to just uh, leave it as it is. Our cruising altitude today will be uh, 41,000 feet or flight level 410. There's a couple different ways you can punch this in. You can either hit flight level 410, throw that up into cruise, or you can just hit F 410, or you can just hit 41,000 feet. All does the same thing. Execute that, it gives us a gross weight takeoff and a zero fuel weight. All look within limits, which is good. We'll go to the takeoff section. This is where we get our speeds and punch in our environmental information. So the aircraft, since we told the aircraft that we're departing from Pontiac off of 27 left, it knows the runway distance of 65 21 feet. Runway's dry. Uh, the winds right now, let's say, are uh, 300 at 10. We'll throw that into R1. Our outside air temperature of 24C. Altimeter 2999. Oops. 2999. That will give us a pressure altitude, and as soon as we punched in our winds, it gave us a, a headwind component and a crosswind component. So now that this looks good, we'll hit the next button. This gives us our speeds, our calculated speeds. So since these numbers look good, we'll send them. Complete. We can go ahead and confirm that on our PFD or MFD. So now that this is complete, um, there's only a couple things left to do in terms of setting up the aircraft for, for takeoff. Uh, we can go ahead and punch in a squat code if we had it. We would come up to one of the boxes and click our ATC code. Let's just say it's 7447. We could also punch in our departure frequency. First we punch in our uh, tower frequency, and then departure frequency at 27.5. So that's pretty much it for initializing the aircraft. 